Golden Gun. Uh, is that a James Bond reference? I in 19, uh, 85, 1985. Is that a birth year? That uh, that makes you younger than my youngest brother, which means that I am getting old and dying. Uh, at any rate, I am glad that you have found such peace. Actually, I've found uh, through my personal experience that people that have formerly abused drugs and alcohol uh, find peace in religion where they could not find it in drugs and alcohol. And I think that drugs and alcohol are not a good place to find inner peace. Uh, I, uh, you made a couple of mentions about, you know, inner torment, blah, blah, blah. I am, I'm sufficiently at peace with myself. I'm, uh, I'm definitely more at peace with myself now than I was when I was younger. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with biochemistry and hormones. But, you know, so be it. If you want to attribute it to the grace of God, I can't dissuade you from that. Anyway, um, besides personal experience, uh, you brought up prayer being a healing tool. There was one study, I think it had a sample of about 300 and some odd people. Uh, that's not, you know, seriously, uh, statistically significant. That's a fairly small sample. But so be it. If that, uh, if that convinces you, you know, fine, that's not enough evidence for me. The good thing about uh, prayer studies is that they are testable in uh, random sampling, and uh, the more studies, the uh, the more we know. So, uh, if there actually is something to it, then the evidence will show that, and if there isn't anything to it, then the evidence will show that as well. There needs to be no faith involved. It either is or it isn't. Um evolutionists who believe in the Big Bang Theory. That's funny. Uh, it's two separate realms of science here, biology and astrophysics. Uh, regardless, I have gone into decent amount of depth for a layman on evolution in a couple of my previous videos. Take a look if you want. I got a two-part response to Jesus Freak 777 and then a, uh, a short question which I have yet to receive an intelligent answer on called micro versus macro evolution is bunk. Um, I swear in that one because I'm sufficiently agitated so if there's any children in the room do not watch that video. Um, but I have not gone into detail on the Big Bang. The Big Bang is, is interesting because uh, you attribute it to the, the, the Singletary. <laughs> I'm picturing a, a guy standing by himself in a room and he's got a shirt that says, Hello, my name is Terry. And he happens to be by himself. Uh, the singularity, as in the one thing, singular, as in single, singularity is a, um, the, I, the concept of it is a byproduct of observable evidence. I am certain that you are aware of the Doppler effect. Uh, audible Doppler effect, anyway, our eyes aren't sensitive enough to pick up visual Doppler effect with light. But with sound, we can definitely hear it. You know, as something, as an object is making sound and approaching you, the sound waves are compressed, it sounds higher in pitch. When it's right in front of you, it actually sounds at the correct pitch, and then as it's traveling away from you, the sound waves are stretched out and it sounds lower in pitch, the Doppler effect. Uh, people looking up into space with telescopes noticed a, an odd phenomenon called the red shift. Just as when an object is moving away from you and its pitch is lowered because these sound waves are stretched out, the red shift is an observable optical phenomenon, whereas when something is traveling away from you, the light waves are stretched out, 
shifted to the red end of the spectrum. Now you would expect that as the, you know, the Earth is spinning around the Sun, the Sun's spinning around the center of the galaxy, the galaxy's, I don't know, rotating around the center of the universe, whatever, everything's spinning. You would expect certain amounts of redshift and blue shift as you got farther away or closer to objects. What uh, astronomers were noticing was that there was redshift everywhere that you looked. All 360 mark, 360 degrees of three-dimensional space that you looked, everything was red shifting. That means everything was drifting away from everything else at fairly high speed too. I mean, uh, not astronomically high, but you know, for people on Earth, they're considering it, you know, crazy fast, like you know, thousands of miles per hour. So. Um, If you, you know, it's simple. If you can see things drifting away from each other, all you have to do is, you know, take those measurements and just play them in reverse. Eventually you get, you know, backwards, you know, count backwards in time, and then you'll get to a point where everything is at the same point. The, you know, the starting location of the expansion. That is called the singularity, the one thing, when everything was all together at one point. Um... So the, the, the idea of a singularity is a byproduct of observable evidence. The, the, they saw the redshift first and then came up with the idea of the Big Bang to support the observation. That's basic science. You see something, you come up with an idea that uh, attempts to explain it. If the idea is good, it will uh, continue to explain it even if you find more information. Um, the theory of evolution is a good example of this too. Um, the more we learn about the diversity of life on the Earth, the more we learn about um, the mutations in DNA, the more we learn about um, the, the biological history of the Earth as we you know, discover more fossils despite their rarity, uh, the more evolution holds true. Um, the details you know, might be surprising because you know, we'll, we'll come up with an idea and be like, okay, well maybe there's like uh, you know, maybe Neanderthals were actually, you know, on, on the line, but now we found out that Neanderthals were uh, uh, a cousin species, not actually one of our descendants, or you know, Homo erectus was part of our, you know, descendancy, and they're not directly related to us. They were another, um, um, like a sister species. So, uh, the the general idea holds true, even if, you know, you discover more information and you find out that uh, details that you had assumed before were incorrect. That's that's fine. You know that's how you increase knowledge and and learn more about what's what's real. So uh, there, there's no need to combine the two ideas of evolution and the Big Bang. They deal with two very different and you know very complicated subjects. You don't need to mush them together. I'm sorry that the the both ideas uh, disagree with the with with Genesis. Uh, don't feel left out because those two ideas disagree with every other creation myth that any other religion has ever come up with in the history of humanity. So it's not like, uh, you know, science is picking on the Christians. Uh, everybody just happened to be wrong. But, you know, you know Copernicus was wrong, and, uh, you know, that's just how it works. You come up with an idea. If it's the right idea, then it stands up to heavy criticism because it's actually true. And if it's the wrong idea, well, then, you know, hopefully we'll learn from our mistakes. No big, uh, no big deal.